be unto you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. Welcome to our midweek Bible study on this holy week. We're excited to be sacrificing unto the Lord as we are consecrating before the Lord fasting. If you would like to join us, you certainly can. Join us in the morning for prayer at 8 a.m., our daily bread at 9 o'clock, and then we're fasting to 5 p.m. After 5, we're eating, eating, eating fruits and vegetables. We're going to leave the sweets alone as much as we can, all right? If you can stand it, stand it. It'll help you. Let's fast to focus and to, in our own way, identify with the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave so many years ago. All right, here we are. It's Wednesday night. Get your house together. Call who you know. Text them. Email them. Let's gather all the Lord's people to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. I have reached out to Pastor Leonard Pope, who served with me in ministry for many, many years. And I ask, amen, even as he is planning his own work and digging out the work of the Lord, if he would minister for us the good word of God during this holy week. We are excited. We're in expectation. In just a moment, we're going to have him come forth. But I just want to take a moment and ask all the saints to join me this Sunday. Yeah, we're going to celebrate that resurrection at the Silver Spot Cinema there in Orange Village at 10 o'clock. The service begins, but you want to be there at 930. You want to be there at 930. We're going to wear white for those that got some other plans. Bring a, bring a white handkerchief. We're just going to have a display of unity as we worship the Lord uh, together. It's going to be beautiful. And uh, you want to be on time, come in, get your seat, and get in, amen, the flow of the service as it's going to be very powerful. And then after the service, after we worship, after we hear the word of the Lord, after we pray for the Lord's people, we're going to have a special presentation, a music presentation, as well as a movie and so it could be a wonderful family affair on this Sunday. And we're going to follow it up again next Sunday, the same thing. Why? Because it's first Sunday, the next Sunday. All right? Okay. I cannot wait to hear the good word of God at this time. Let's go to Pastor Leonard Pope. Praise the Lord, everyone. I am Pastor Leonard Pope, and I bring you greetings from Grace Fellowship. Assembly, I thank you for, for joining us for tonight's service. Um, I want to give honor to Bishop Clark for allowing me the opportunity to present this message uh, of the Last Supper as we journey to the cross. It truly is an honor and a privilege to be with you. And uh, let's, let's just jump, let's jump right into it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. For this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice to be glad in it. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all the glory, O oh God. We know the flower fades and the grass withers, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. I pray even now that you have your way. Allow me to be decreased, that your word, that your will would have free reign in this place. Let your word go forth with power and boldness. Let it change the lives of we, your people. Let us never be the same again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Truly, it's, it's a blessing, it's a blessing, a blessing. This, yes, this is, this is, we call it Passion Week, we can call it the triumphant entry, but this is the time that the whole situation was set in motion. You know, Christ, along the way, he did a lot of miracles. He walked on water, he opened blinded eyes, uh, he raised people from the dead, he 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 uh he he did so much. <clears throat> he did so much during this time, but but those were things that just, just happened along the way. They, things things that he did along the way. Uh, it was it was kind of sort of like, well, since I'm here, I may as well fix this. And since I'm since I'm here, I may as well do something about that. And, and he 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 spoke peace to storms, and 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 uh, he 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 put people in positions where. Hey, the, the, the gospel message does not come to judge you. It, it, it doesn't come to tell you what you did wrong. It came to help you get it right. And, and he became 
uh, the reality of what it meant to be in covenant with God. He's, he came to show the Jews what they had, uh, the, they were in covenant with God. He came to show them this, this is what it means to be in covenant with God. And, 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 and this week, you know, the Bible says, for this cause was the Son of Man uh, who came that he may destroy the works of the evil one. And, and this week, uh, the Bible says he set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem. In other words, he never forgot what he came for. He did a lot of things along the way, but he never forgot what he came for. And it was this week. It was the triumphant entry into Jerusalem where he says, you never understood your time of visitation when he prayed for him. He said, you just, you, you just don't know what's about to happen. You don't know who I am. You don't know how it went down. You just, you just don't know. And, and so we, we celebrate his sacrifice. You know, we celebrate the debt that he paid because it was a debt that he did not owe. And so we give him praise and we give him honor. But tonight, yeah, tonight, um, my topic is going to be about the Last Supper. Yeah, about the Last Supper. And I, I'll be coming out of Luke 22, 13 through 20. Luke 22, 13 through 20. And it reads, and they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to talk about the Last Supper. But my topic, my subject matter is a seat at the table. Yeah, it's a seat at the table. And, and, and I, 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 I phrase it that way because... In, in today's society, everybody wants to be a boss. You know, everybody wants to be a boss. And e everybody wants to be, uh, so for some reason, in authority. They, they think it's, it, they want to be in control. They, they, they want to be the leader. And somehow they, they, they've got a distorted perspective, in my opinion, of what it means to lead. What it means to lead. Uh, you know, what Christ says to, the, the greatest among you is the servant of all, you know, and lead, uh, an opportunity to lead is really an opportunity to serve. And, and, and everybody wants to be a boss. Everybody wants, and, and it's fashionable to make the statement, uh, um, we need a seat at the table. You know, your, your seat at the table is, is your seat of influence, your seat of, of power. And, and, and so everybody wants a seat at the table. They think if they can get a seat at the table, they can make some changes. If they can get a seat at the table, uh, they can do some things. If they can get a seat at the table, they can make decisions. If they can get a seat at the table, they can be recognized as as a as a mover, a shaker, and an influence, if you will. They if they can get a seat at the table, they 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 can get their their voice heard. They can get their needs met. If they can just get a seat at the table, they. Uh, they, they think that some kind of way this this seat at the table will change their lives. It will change their lives. It will, it will bring them into prominence, some of them say. If I could just get a seat at the table, um, uh, even, even myself, I, 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 
I oftentimes say, if you let me in the room, I will get a seat at the table. Yeah, you let me in the room. We, these, these are my words. I, I, I must confess. I, I'm not. I, I'm preaching to myself right now. And and and, and because because we have this perspective that the seat at the table is where changes are made. Seat at the table is where decisions are made. A seat at the table is is where I can have some input on on what's going to happen in the future. I, I can have some say so in how things are going to be played out, how things are going to be mapped out. If I could just get to the table, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm no longer going to be a, a thermometer. I'm, I'm going to be a thermostat. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to change the temperature in the room because I have a seat at the table. I, I'm going, I'm going to change some lives because I have a seat at the table. And, and sometimes we think that if we get the seat at the table, then that's the game changer. If we get the seat at the table, then um, then we can we can control our destiny. We can control how we want a situation to play out if we can get a seat at the table. And and but I, 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 have, a, I have a question for you: um, Are you ready for a seat at the table? Yeah, are you ready? For a seat at the table, can you can you handle being at the table? Yeah, yeah. You you've been on the other side of the table and and you've done a lot of things, but can you handle a seat at the table? I know you 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 sound real good and you sound real confident, you know. But the question is, can you really handle being at the seat of, at the seat of the table? You know, I I, I I know I know it looks. Like, you know, I, if you think that if I can get there, if I can get to the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an old saying that if you're not at the table, then you're on the menu. And so the, the, the premise is uh, I, I can stay in, I can stay relevant as long as I'm at the table. Well, well sometimes you don't need a seat at the table. All you need is a representative at the table. Yeah, you don't always need a seat at every table. Don't don't you don't go to every table. You don't you don't you don't in business. I don't care if it's business. I don't care if it's if it's Christendom. I don't care if it's secular. I don't care if it's art. You don't want a seat at every table. You don't want to seat at every table. Like you, you, you don't want a seat. You want to be very calculated in. What table you want to sit at? You want to be very uh, specific at what table you want to sit at. You you want to be uh, very understanding of what's going on at the table because a a every conversation at the table has it can change you. It can change you. Yeah, uh, there's there's some things that's going to be said at the table that won't be said in public. It's, there's some things going to be said at the table that, that you didn't expect to hear. There's some things that's going to be said at the table uh, that's going to be in a, in a private setting. You know? it, 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 what happens is you begin to hear the influence of why a decision was made. Yeah, you, you begin to hear what stirred a decision that's happening. You, you, you begin to hear uh, information that that if you're not careful, it would spook you. If you're not careful, it'll scare you. If you're not careful, it'll cause you to run off because uh, sometimes this information is 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 too much. It's 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 too much. It's sometimes the information at the table is is happening and it, and it, and it's coming at you fast. And then if if your if your whole goal was to get to the table, my my question is is. Now that you're at the table, now what? Yeah, now what? You know, you're at the table. Uh, my desire is to get to the table. My desire, I can't wait because I want to I wanna let them know because, hey, especially in our community, they don't understand what's going on in, 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 the, in the black community. So, so we need a seat at the table. Okay, you're at the table. Now what? What? Now what? What? You've been running. You've been running to get to the table. You've been running to get to the table. Now what? 
Now, 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 now what? Because you, you had to get to the table. <laughs> you had to get to the table. But you, you, you forgot. You forgot that there's business going on at the table. There's stuff going on at the table. You assume the conversation at the table before you got to the table. And if you're not careful, you'll get to the table and we'll be more confused at the table than you ever were before. If, you, if you're not careful, if you don't do your homework, you'll find out when you get to the table, things are not what they seem to be. Understanding that this is the Last Supper, which means the guests at the table were specific. The guests at the table were handpicked. <laughs> the guests at the table, uh, the guests at the table, uh, they weren't just some random guys. You know, these these were these were handpicked. These were uh, Christ's twelve. He was the twelve. It was the twelve disciples, and and they walked with him, and and they they handled him. Uh, the, as as John said, we 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 beheld the wonder of his glory. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, he, he walked with these 12 and, and they, they saw when he walked on the water. And they, they saw when he, he would pray and they would saw they saw demonstrations of power. They, they saw him. They saw him in his glory. Say, and they, they, he took him on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, Peter, James, and John. And he, he revealed who he really was to them. Yeah, he revealed. Who he really was, and and they were with him uh, when when he raised Jairus' daughter, and they was with him when he laid his hand on the beard of the boy uh, in the city of Nahum, and 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 the, and the little boy sits up in his own funeral. They they were with him. They were with him. They was with him when when he said Lazarus come forth. Yeah, they was with him. Um, they was with him. They was with him. They walked with him, and they talked with him all the time, and they was there when he refuted. When he spake against the Pharisees, and, and they was with him when he talked about his kingdom, and he they was with him when he talked about uh, the, the mount, uh, the sermon on the mount, and he they were with him when he began to talk about the beatitudes, and, and they were with him, they were with him every step of the way, and they was with him every step of the way, and they was with him night and day, they was with him, and they talked to him, they were taught of him and they were fed of him and they had private conversations they had private conversations yeah they they, they had private conversations yeah they were there when, when when nicodemus showed up in the middle of the night um he said how can a man be born again and christ kind of looked at him like i'm gonna say in the dark the same thing i said in the light i'm gonna say in private the same thing that i said publicly you can come at night Nigga demons, so you could come follow me during the day. At the end of the day, ye must be born again. I'm not gonna say anything privately that I didn't say publicly. I'm not gonna change my words. I'm not gonna change my power. I'm not gonna dumb it down for you. I'm not gonna rescript it for you. I'm not gonna tell you something that you wanna hear. They were there when he when he talked to the, to to Nicodemus. They were there. They were there. They were there when his mother and his brothers came looking. He said, these that do the will of God, these are my brothers and mothers. And they were there. Yeah, they were there. They were there. They were there walking with him. And he, he, the Bible says, he said, I desire. I, he said, I desire to have supper with you. He said, yeah, this is, I desire. I, I really want to do this. I want to have this sit down with y'all. So y'all sit down. Because what I'm about to say to y'all now is going to be something that y'all, y'all, I've been saying it, but, but, you know, sometimes when people tell you something in passing, you don't, you don't catch the gravity of it. You don't, you know, it's like somebody says something to you and you kind of distracted, you kind of a little preoccupied over here and you don't catch the gravity of it. You don't ca catch the magnitude of what has just been said. And so you kind of go like, ah, yeah, I heard you the first time, but they really didn't hear you. Yeah, they, 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 they heard you, but they're really not listening. Yeah, they're really not listening because, because if they really 
caught what you just said, they would have more questions about why you're saying that, you know. And this wasn't just one of the twelve. This was this was Christ. You know, he was saying, he says, I'm I'll be with you in a little while, in a little while I'll be gone, then I'll be and they and they're confused. They 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 didn't they couldn't wrap their minds around what he was really saying. And so so the seat at the table is I, I it meant give me your undivided attention. Yeah, give me your undivided attention. Give me your undivided attention. And, and because I got something to say, and y'all can't miss this. You, you can't be distracted when you hear this. Because I'm, I'm giving you uh, what's about to happen. I'm letting you know what's about to happen. And, and put everything away. Put, put your cell phones away. Put your iPads away. Uh, turn off the TV. Get off the phone. Uh, uh, close the door. Everybody sit down and be quiet because I got something to tell you. And I can't, I can't afford for you to be distracted. I can't afford to you for you to miss this moment because of what's about to happen now, what I'm about to say now, is it's, it's, it's crucial to your development. It's crucial to your development. Uh, I, I believe it was one scripture. Um, uh, Christ told Peter, he says, Satan desired to sift you as wheat. He said, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. And he makes this bold this statement. He says, when you're converted, strengthen your brothers. Uh, it, it, uh, signifying that you're not converted. You know, you've been committed. You've been there with me. You've walked with me, and you talked with me, and you you had a revelation that no one else had, and, and you walked on the water uh, uh, until you lost focus. And and but you haven't been converted. You haven't been converted. And in, in order for you to be converted, you need to understand what I'm about to say, because because greater works well ye do. Well, how can I do greater works? Because I'm because after this, you're going to get converted. I need you to be converted. I love your commitment, but you got to be converted. And, and, and so I need you to listen very closely. Because this seat at the table was for invited guests only. Yeah, it was for invited guests only. Because not everybody can hear what you need to hear. Not everybody can handle what you need to hear. And so I, he, he handpicked these guys. And one of them was a betrayer. I can't. I, and he knew it. it. And even though he knew, he knew what was in him. Yeah, he still said you need to hear it. And you need to hear it. Uh, you are at the table because you need to hear what's being said. And he invited the 12. And he began to talk and he began to speak of his suffering. And he began to speak of his arrest. And he be began to speak of what was going to happen. And he even spake of his resurrection. And he said, I'm going to go before you into Galilee. He's like, yeah, I'm, they're going to do this. I'm the summer man. He, he didn't say, he, he, he said, he said, I'm going to be offered up. But he did tell him, he said, tonight, all y'all going to be offended of me. Tonight, all y'all going to pretend like y'all don't know me tonight. You know, we talk about Peter. We talk about the things Peter did. But he said, all oh, y'all. He First, he said, one of y'all going to betray me. And, you know, all 12 going... Oh, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? You know, and and so they they're a little distracted because they still think about man. I I I won't be. Think I'm not going to betray him. But what he said to Judas, they all heard it, but they just didn't catch it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't catch it. They and he said what well, he said what he said about Judas when Judas tipped his hand in the sock. He said, "What you do, do quickly." And they said, well, maybe he's telling, he told Judas to go buy some stuff. Maybe he told Judas, you know, Judas had the money. He sent Judas to the corner store. Maybe he, he sent Judas uh, to go to go get some more bread and milk or something, you know. And, and, 
But they didn't catch it. They didn't catch it. And they being distracted. They being distracted. He's telling them what's about to happen. He said, y'all going to be offended in me. Y'all going to be offended in me. Man, man, my question is, can you handle what's being said at the table? Can you handle it? Because here, here's, here's my point. There were 12 disciples that sat at the table. We know after Judas, there was 11 disciples left that sat at the table. And hey, whatever happened to Philip after the crucifixion? Where, where, where's Philip's epistle? Where, where's his epistle? Thaddeus. Where, where's Thaddeus' epistle? Where, uh, Simon the Zealot. Where, where's his epistle? Where, Andrew, Andrew. Let's talk about Andrew. Where's Andrew's epistle? I, I, I'm trying to find it. See, the conversation at the table can change you. Yeah, it can change you. Because there were the 11 disciples, most of which we never heard from again after the Last Supper because they could not handle what was being said. We didn't hear from them again. We heard from Peter again. We heard from Mark again. We heard from Matthew again. Paul was not. Paul was not one of the twelve. He was not. Paul wasn't at the table. So we, we can't give them credit for Paul. Paul wasn't at the table. What, what happened to these other guys? What happened to these other eight? Possibly eight disciples. What, well, what happened to them? They got to the table. And the conversation was too much for them. They got to the table. And forgot. Who brought them there. Yeah, they forgot it. Who brought them there. I submit to you. Don't forget. Who brought you to the table. Your place at the table is not your time to shine. Your place at the table is your time to let him shine. Your place at the table is that you're different from everybody else. Your place at the table is for you to bring the presence of God. Your place at the table is not for you to boast your resume or give credit to your uh, institution of academics your, or, or to tell, oh, I was I, I was raised by by an educator. My, my mother and my father, they 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 poured into me. No, no, no. Your, your position at the table. It's not about you. Your position at the table. It was never about you. It's, it's about him. It's about him. He has put you in a position to have a seat at the table. Because when you get to the table, you bring Christ. When you get to the table, you bring his presence. When you get to the table, you bring his spirit. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't, don't, don't come to the table with your own agenda. If you come to the table with his agenda, and the Bible says, and he will give you in the same hour what to say. Even when you don't feel qualified to be at the table. He says, if you bring me to the table, I will make the difference. Because whenever Christ is at the table, whenever he's in the room, whenever he's present, things change. They never stay the same. They never stay the same. And he's not bringing you to the table for you to be wonderful. He didn't bring you to the table because it's your time to shine. He didn't bring it to bring you to the table because it's your season. No, he brought you to the table because he needs a vessel that's going to represent him. He needs to ride in. On you. He needs to enter in on you. And when you get to the table, 
you have to be sensitive enough to hear his voice. And you have to be conscious enough to know what he's saying. And you have to be humble enough to let him use you. Yeah, because you'll see that the table, it's not about you. It's not about your glory. It's about his glory. It's about his glory. It may be your story, but it's about his glory. Because at the end of the day, he wants to commune with us. He wants to commune with us. And his hand-picked disciples, he brought them together because he wanted to commune with them and give them information that would change the world. And the information that he gave changed the world. In 2024, we still speak of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And just like he said it would go down, it went down exactly the way he said. And even he, when he said, I'm going to go before you in Galilee on the third day, he rose. He told them exactly what was going to happen. And for some of them, it changed the trajectory of their lives. Some went silent, but others got converted. Yeah, others got converted. Because you see, your, your place at the table, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. Your place at the table is about God and Him alone. Him alone. Let Him use you. When you get to the table, let God speak through you. Yeah, let him speak through you. Because he wants to commune with you. Because the Last Supper, Christ's greatest story he told was this is why I'm here. So I can commune with you. And this is why he gave you a seat at the table. Let's pray, Father. We thank you for this word. Ah, we thank you for a seat at the table, God. We pray for now that you would be with us, that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would cover us with your spirit, that you would wash us and cleanse of us of all unrighteousness. Lord, be with us as we endeavor to speak your word, as we endeavor to do your will, to have your way in our lives. We cast our cares upon you, for we know you care for us. Be with us in all that we endeavor to do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Somebody, oh, thank God for the word. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. If you own, interact. We want to know that you own. We want you, we want you to say something. You got a seat at the table. I like that. Thank you, Pastor Pope. Thank you. Different, what a different insight on the Last Supper. As Christ teaches his last lesson, a lesson in servitude, these men were invited to the table. Who brought you to the table? When God elevates you, when God promotes you, when God brings you in the midst of a group of people, you got a seat at the table. Good stuff. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for the word. We exalt you to join us in this holy week of prayer and fasting. We will be in special prayer tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. From 8 to 9, we're praying. From 9 o'clock, there's going to be another wonderful presentation of the word of God as we look back at the garden, as we look at the arrest, as we look at the trial, as we look at the crucifixion, as we look at the players that were involved. We're going to take a look. This morning, we took a look at the Pharisees. Pastor Vanetta opened up for us this group of hypocrites. 
sticklers of the law, but wouldn't, wouldn't practice what they preached. My God. And they hated Jesus because he certainly moved their cheese. He, they hated Jesus. It was a good word. Thank you for the word this morning, Pastor Vanetta. And again tonight, Pastor Leonard Pope. God bless you, man. God bless you. Thank you for the good word of God. All right, people of God, we love you. We're going to let you go on tonight, but we won't we won't leave without worshiping God through our giving, as our custom is, as our orientation is. We are a giving community. We have a giving culture, and we worship the Lord through giving. We ask that all of our partners and members, that they would sow the $24 seed on tonight, 2024. We're giving $24 tonight. Amen. All of those that can, all those that will, we want you to navigate and do it right now in Jesus' name. Others, if you have your tithe, certainly that is appropriate. And should the Holy Spirit speak to you to sow something special, you do what God tells you to do as it relates to your worship through giving. We are giving you special instructions to prepare a $500 super seed offering, a $1,000 super seed offering. First Sunday in April, that's not this Sunday, we're going to let the focus and the attention be on Jesus himself as we take a look at his resurrection and the work of the cross. Amen. I'm excited about that. You are welcome to join us again tomorrow morning. Again, prayer on the phone, 8 a.m. in the Daily Bread, another special presentation in the morning at 9 o'clock. And uh, come on on the fast. I told him this morning, when you start fasting, the clock goes in slow motion. <laughs> All the longest days are fasting days, I'm telling you. But that's your flesh. If you've been getting aches, headaches, and you, you know, you're feeling all kind of strange, you're getting sick, that ain't nothing but your flesh acting out. My flesh acting out too. My flesh want to get some sugar, but I'm putting my flesh in the headlock, amen, and consecrating myself before the Lord to have me a salad, and I'll have a little fruit before the evening is out. Some water will be just fine, and uh, we just got two more days of prayer, two more days of special consecration in Holy Week. So navigate, sow your seed, and uh, let's finish out the evening, amen, honoring the Lord. And we'll see you again first thing in the morning. This is Passion Week. This is Holy Week. Let's, let's honor the Lord in this week. Father, I thank you now for all that have joined us on tonight. I thank you for those that have opened their hearts to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You've invited us to the table. We have a seat at the table. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the word. God, I'm praying that our hearts would bring forth good fruit. God, you're speaking to us. You're opening our minds. You're opening the eyes of our understanding. Now let the word be engrafted in our hearts and let us be closer, be closer to you as a result of your preached word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I love you, love you, love you. You all have a great evening. I can't wait to minister. Amen. A little bit more. First thing in the morning. Until then, peace to the family. If you believe in the power of prayer, join us at 8 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday, on our prayer line, 712-775-8968. The access code is 304-282. Join Bishop Clark Monday through Fridays at 9 a.m. for our daily bread. It's refreshing, it's enlightening, and it's empowering. We'll see you there. Greetings, everyone. I'm Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark, and I'm creating a new model for ministry. We're gonna be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at the Silver Spot Cinema, March 31st, 10 a.m. That's right, Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday. You want to meet us in Orange Village at the Silver Spot Cinema, as I am creating a new model for ministry. I have a powerful word from the Lord. You want to be there. I look forward to seeing you. Until then, 
decent family. Good evening, everybody. We thank God you joined us on this midweek service. The Word has been enriching and empowering, and it's helping us maximize our potential. Join us Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. for prayer. God bless you, and we'll see you there. There are several ways to support the Body of Christ Assembly through your giving. Through our Cash App, dollar sign, B-O-C-A-C-H-U-R-C-H. You can mail in your donation to BACA at 20900 Miles Parkway, Warrensville Heights, Ohio 44128. Or you can call in your donation to 216-475-6327. Remember, every seed brings forth a harvest. Begin your gifting today.